Archaeology guides are some of the most searched for RuneScape videos. There are many of these guides out there, but this one is mine. As a player that has gotten level 120 archaeology on a main account and nearly 120 on my iron, I want to give my two cents in a short and sweet guide of things I found most important about training the skill. Good day everybody, and welcome. Before we jump straight into my quick tips for training archaeology, I want to cover why you should train the skill in the first place if you're new to it. The bulk of the benefit is in the relic powers you can unlock. High level relics are absolute musts for end game or even mid game PVM setups and will really change things for you even earlier mid game. There are also various amazing skilling relics you can swap out as needed that make certain grinds much more bearable such as fishing combined with cooking or divination. Aside from the relics, there are two big nice to haves I can think of that you'll get from high level archaeology. The first is the Grandmaster Archaeology Outfit, unlockable after level 99 archaeology and some achievements. Aside from having great perks for actually training archaeology, this outfit provides a ton of teleports to dig sites around the world as well as all the collectors of archaeology. This adds up to a ton of NPCs that are handy for a variety of tasks, such as many clue scrolls, or for example, Ooglog, if you use that to buy meat for your player-owned farm. The second nice perk of archaeology training is that it is the fastest method of skilling invention experience in the game that I'm aware of at least. This assumes that you have the Matok of space and time augmented. The invention experience you get by siphoning from this thing is substantial compared to other skilling methods at lower levels, but especially once you get to level 99 plus plots, uh, it'll take about 4 hours of digging to get the Matok to level 12, where you can siphon for the maximum experience of 640,000. Since this Matok counts as a tier 99 item, you get more invention experience from it than any other item in the game, actually. So that's why you should train archaeology. Now let's jump into the most important things to know, in my opinion, for training the skill. Number one, buy the store upgrades and get the achievements needed to unlock them as soon as they're available. The store I'm talking about is run by Ezrael in the archaeology headquarters building, which sells items and unlocks. This store takes Chronotes as currency, which you can buy off the Grand Exchange from other players or earn yourself by turning in restored artifacts to archaeology collections. At this store, you'll purchase Matok Precision upgrades to speed up your artifact excavations, soil box capacity upgrades, material storage container capacity upgrades, which you'll need as you accumulate more and more types of materials, the regular and Grandmaster archaeology outfits, and the auto screener blueprint, which is absolutely essential for your archaeology grind. You can also purchase consumable items that improve your excavating, though I recommend holding off on these until later. Number two, use archaeology potions and a god banner as needed. It's easy to forget that you can boost your archaeology level to solve mysteries and gain relic powers. When you have access to archaeology potions, which is any time if you're not playing on an iron account, you can get a boost of plus three from the potion temporarily, or a boost of plus two using a god banner once a day for 30 minutes. If you don't know what a god banner is or how to get one, I'm not going to explain it here, but look it up anyways since you should definitely take the time to get one. As an example of what you can do with boosts, I'm level 117 archaeology on this account, but I already have the level 120 mystery solved and all the higher level relics because I just boosted to excavate and restore, restore all the artifacts needed. Number 3. The more you spend on archaeology, the faster it'll go. This one might be self-explanatory, but I want to tell you the best way that you can use your GP to speed up archaeology. The first thing you can do is buy materials to restore artifacts you've dug up. Damaged artifacts are untradeable, but materials certainly are tradable, and you'll find out as you go through excavations that you'll end up with less materials than you need to restore all the artifacts you've dug up. Restoring the artifacts is the best and fastest experience you can get, so buying up the materials you lack is great. The next best use of your money is buying chronotes off of the Grand Exchange. You can use spare chronotes to send out archaeology research, which at higher levels can get you... Uh, up to and a bit over 200,000 experience over a 24-hour mission. By the way, it's worth mentioning here that completing all mysteries of a dig site as early as possible will allow you to hire those site managers for your research team, which have great boosts to research like time reduction and increased loot. If you plan on spending a lot of hours actively grinding archaeology, a better use for your chronotes actually once you have the Grandmaster outfit is actually all the consumables you can get from Ezreal's shop. Notably, the Archaeologist T give you, gives you a 50% boost to excavation experience, which is huge, and the high-spec monocle speeds up your artifact discovery time by increasing your Matok precision 20%. I recommend only spending chronotes on these once you have the Grandmaster outfit because it extends their effect time from 20 minutes to 30. 
Number four, don't lamp it until after level 99. It's tempting, but just don't, because the most important thing you can do to boost high level archaeology training is getting all the store upgrades. This means that regardless to get the Grandmaster gear and rewards, you will need to get the achievements for excavating and restoring 1000 artifacts yourself. Even if you're slow leveling, this means that you'll still inevitably end up at the Venator excavation site grinding daggers and crossbows. Lamping past this will just not save you any time in the long run. Number 5. Hold on to your restored artifacts. At the very least, know that restored artifacts are very valuable for disassembling into ancient invention components. If you don't have the invention level for those yet, hold on to your artifacts until you do. An alternate use for spare restored artifacts is donating to the cart by the Archaeology Guild, which will give you 40% of their chronote value. Not as good as a trade for your artifacts as disassembly for components, strictly GP speaking, but not bad either if you've no need of ancient invention components and need some quick chronotes. Number six, don't grind for tetra compasses specifically. Unless you're going specifically for Tony's Matok drop for log purposes or whatever, I found that your experience rates are overall better just sticking to the best dig plots for your level rather than focusing on Tetra Compass piece rewards from archaeology collectors. I do recommend holding on to artifacts that are part of collections that reward Tetra Compass pieces, like some of the goblin ones. This way, when you get to levels required to complete the collections, you will already have the lower level artifacts ready so you don't have to go back to lower level plots just to get more. The more level you level archaeology too, the more Tetra Compass pieces you'll find, um, just from casual excavating as well, so don't worry. You'll still get a lot of Tetra Compass pieces even if you ignore collections that reward them specifically. Number 7. Use the RuneScape Wiki's Archaeology Hotspot Calculator. This thing isn't really talked about, but it's awesome for getting an idea of what experience rates you can expect for your current level, gear, experience multipliers, and plots as well as other handy information like how many artifacts and materials you can expect to excavate per hour. That part of the calculator is quite handy for figuring out your odds of getting Inquisitor staff pieces and Spirit of Annihilation tips too. This calculator may or may not speed up your archaeology training, but at the very least it's a nice tool that everybody should know about. Number 8. Dig at the highest level plots you can, with a few exceptions. I say exceptions depending on how much money you're willing to spend on extra materials and porters. Generally speaking, digging at the highest level plot you can gets you the best experience rates, but some plots are annoying in that they require odd materials to complete. I won't go into plots specifically since that would be a lot to cover, but you'll notice that at some plots you'll excavate artifacts that require materials to restore which aren't present in the plot that the artifact comes from. For these artifacts, I only recommend excavating them if you have a stockpile of the miscellaneous material or if you don't mind buying a bunch of it. One good example is the higher level Bandos dig spot that requires Stars of Ceridamon and Eye of Dagon to restore the crown artifacts found there. For an iron account or anyone on a budget, this is just annoying and not worth excavating in my opinion. After you get enough of the artifacts to complete research collections, just go to other plots that have um, materials that are found within the same plot. Number 9. Use porters when possible, especially at higher level plots. This is a good example of money spending, uh, speeding up training. If you have money for porters and very, very ideally a grace of the elves to store them in, your training will be completely AFKable at dig plots and you'll be able to just live there until you run out of porter charges. This assumes you also have an auto screener to not accumulate soil. The time you save by not having to run to material boxes to dump your inventory and the convenience of being able to not pay attention for five minutes at a time is amazing. Number 10, do the right quests for archaeology bonuses. This is pretty important. Having the Desperate Times quests done will allow you to get the Cosmic Focus, and completing Desperate Measures will let you upgrade it to a Cosmic Accumulator. Both of these don't let your Sprite Focus drop below 10 or 20% respectively, which means that even if you AFK, as long as you start on a Sprite Focus, you'll always have the minimum bonus from that after it goes away to the next plot. The Pontifex Observation Ring can be created after completing as a Nadra's quest, it can be upgraded after completion of City of Sentistan, and further upgraded after completing Extinction. This ring is mostly helpful if you're active or only semi-AFKing, as the big benefit is that it extends the duration that a time sprite hangs out on an excavation spot. I'd only recommend using the fully upgraded version after Extinction though if you have access to Luck of the Dwar Dwarves or Ring of Fortune instead since only the fully upgraded Pontifex Ring gives you the best luck bonus that's useful for archaeology. 
And luck is important, since it factors into finding Tetra Compass pieces and complete tomes. Number 11, iron accounts have a few considerations. If you're not playing on an iron account, you can ignore this part, um, unless you're really poor and will be manually making or gathering supplies yourself. <laughs> One thing I mentioned earlier is that you will end up with more artifacts than you can fully restore if you're ignoring material caches. You should only excavate at proper excavation hotspots with artifacts for the best experience rates, even if you're not restoring all artifacts possible. It's tempting to run to material caches to get the missing materials and restore everything in your bank, but material caches are typically bad experience compared to regular hotspots and not very AFKable. You'll end up waiting around a lot or hopping worlds when you keep clearing out caches after one material. Focus on restoring artifacts that cost the least amount of materials. All artifacts for a given plot give the same experience when restored, but some cost a lot more materials than others. Be mindful of that and ignore the costly ones so you can restore the most artifacts possible as you dig and dig. Porters are still essential for irons doing higher level archaeology, but I really don't recommend making them yourself. It's just really time consuming to do, um, unless you're also looking to grind some crafting experience and have a stockpile of dragon stones. Um, but instead, I suggest pickpocketing Amlod Elves as early as possible and as much as possible because they give out a ton of porters. It's absolutely worth it to get level 99 Thieving and the Master Camouflage outfit as soon as possible for this, as well as the Crystal Mask spell. With all that, you can pickpocket Elves for 5 minutes straight, uninterrupted. You'll also get a number of other handy rares along the way, like the Prif Dennis Musician's Top for Master Clues and probably some Brawling Gloves and a lot of Divine Energy that will add up to a good bit of Divine Charges. What I found myself uh, doing when low on porters was going to pickpocket Amlod until they catch me, go to my best archaeology plot, and then just go back to Amlod after the timer runs down so you can pickpocket them again. Some might find this annoying, but, um, you know, that is iron life for you. My last suggestion for irons has to do with grinding Inquisitor Staff pieces and the Spear of Annihilation tip. Results are very mixed on this topic. Some irons hit level 120 and way beyond without a full Inquisitor Staff or a single Spear Tip. I was extremely fortunate on this end, and I got two Inquisitor Staff pieces at the level 107 dig spots, which have the worst drop rates for that by far, and also got a Spear of Annihilation Tip at level 117. Reminder that you only need to dig up two Inquisitor pieces yourself, and once you hit level 115 Archaeology, you can boost to 118 with a potion and complete the last Zeroshian collection with Sorin, who will give you a piece as well. You can exchange any Inquisitor staff piece by giving Sorin 10 million GP also, so you are not totally screwed if you get duplicate pieces. Anyway, my suggestion as soon as you hit level 107 archaeology is to train only at the Praetorian area excavation spots until you get two Inquisitor staff pieces, and train only at the level 115 Bandos Warforge spot when you're able to until you get a spear tip. I think most irons at some point want to grind these items out anyways, so you might as well focus on them with your archaeology training. You'll be sacrificing some experience rates by dodging higher level excavation spots along the way, but your odds of ending up with a full staff and or spear by the time you hit level 120 are not too bad. At this point, you'll want to continue accumulating crone notes by dumping restored artifacts from these plots into the donation bin and buying material manuals from the shop. These give a 10% boost to excavating materials from dig spots, which means a direct 10% chance to increase to finding staff pieces or spear tips. Alright, that's my rundown. If you follow my pointers here, you'll have the best and most efficient time training archaeology. I didn't cover everything, but whatever I left out is self-explanatory, like getting the best available mat talk as soon as possible. If you found this guide helpful and would like to see more content like this, please consider liking this video and subscribing. Thank you very much for your support, and I'll catch you in the next one.